We just got off the train in Bodium Station and we're gonna walk over to Bodium Castle. At one time, all of this whole Rother Valley was underwater. And what was happening, where well, the French were coming up during the Hundred Years War and they were riding up to the towns and burning them and stealing and killing and doing whatever they could. And so this castle here was built on the waterway actually to help protect this town of Bodium. Welcome to Bodium, Bodium's castle. Here we are at the entrance to Bodium Castle and over here you buy your tickets, there's a gift shop and here are the restrooms. Now there's no restrooms on the castle grounds so if you got to go you should go before you go on the tour and the tour could take you about two hours maybe three so hope you have a good bladder. Hi we're at Bodium Castle in East Sussex and this castle was built in 1385 by Sir Edward Dallingridge. He was a former knight of Edward II and he spent his days during the Hundred Years War in France as a mercenary. And he'd pillage and he'd pilfer the towns and he'd take the money. And he came up here and he solicited the king who let him build this castle. And he didn't really build it for a real fortress. He kind of built it for a, a homestead to have parties and take care of his family. It's not a true castle in the sense that it has very thick walls. It's more of an entertainment castle for his big ego. But we'll get into that a little bit later. But the castle stayed in the Dallingridge family until their line became extinct and it passed to the Luchner family. And the Luchner supported the House of Lancaster during the War of the Roses. Now Richard III from the House of York, when he became king in 1483, he forced siege on the castle. And since it's not really a real castle, they just gave up and said, you could have it. So the castle was confiscated. But later on, Henry VII of the House of Lancaster, he came to power in 1485 and he gave it back to the Luchners. So that's the quick story of this castle. We'll take a walk up the grounds and I'll show you a little bit more. And this is actually a real pillbox from World War II built in 1940 to defend against the German Blitz. Oh, thank you. So in 1641, at the start of the English Civil War, the castle belonged to Lord Thanet, who supported the Royalists. And the Royalists were defeated. So Lord Thanet, he had to pay uh, some fines levied against um, him by Parliament and he sold the castle to collect the money. So the castle once again was dismantled until it was purchased by John Fuller in 1829. And Fuller partially restored it and sold it to First Baron jo George Cubitt. And George Cubitt donated it to Lord Curzon. And upon Lord Curzon's death in 1925, the castle was donated to the National Trust and today is open to the public. And Bodium Castle Bodium Castle was used in the Monty Python script on the Holy Grail identified as Swamp Castle in the Tale of Sir Lancelot sequence. The Bodium Castle sits roughly in the middle of this man-made moat. And the castle itself is a square shape and is built really more for entertaining than for battle. But it's probably one of the most well-preserved quadrangle castles in England. And it's very typical of 14th century architecture. So it is equipped with a central courtyard, a full dining hall, kitchen, and luxurious guest quarters, we'll see later. There are guard rooms on the ground floor and in the basement. The castle had 28 toilets that all drained to the moat. So the moat became pretty much their public sewer and latrine. Now there's four circular towers at each of the corners of the castle. And uh, there's um, square towers in between on the east and south and west walls. Now the towers themselves are three stories high, but the castle is only uh, two stories high. This is the rear gate, and this is the rear entrance to the castle. And there used to be a bridge, a drawbridge, that led from right to here across the moat to the entrance over here. And on the other side of the entrance is the main dining hall and the pantry and the kitchen. So the servants would move all their supplies for their, uh, their dinner parties, and they'd move them across this drawbridge so they didn't disrupt the front of the castle where the main guests were coming in for the entertainment. So this moat itself is only four feet deep and it also sits on a plateau. And if you're invading this castle, if they pulled up the drawbridges, even though it's four feet deep, it's pretty boggy and hard to get across. So right here, this is a plug. And all you have to do 
is get some horses to pull this plug and dig, dig a little trench out here to the ravine and all the water drains out of the lake. And this is how they clean, cleaned out all the toilet water and the sewer discharge. Here's the east side of the Bodium Castle. And we have a couple cylindrical towers. We have the rectangular tower in the middle and another cylindrical tower. And there's four of those cylindrical towers on the castle. And here's the moat. I mentioned it's only four feet deep. And today it looks like it's only about, you can tell by the borderline, the water line here. This moat is only about two feet deep today. Full of carp and ducks. I don't know who this guy is, but I think it's Monty Python Sir Lancelot. This guy here, he's the biggest fish in the lake. His name's Old Henry, Old Henry the Ninth. We were at the north gate of the castle, and during his parties, here's where all the dignitaries would come, like Cinderella. They'd come down this path out here, and they'd enter the castle through the north gate. This is the bridge we walked over, but it's not the original bridge. The original bridge started over here at this rock platform out to this structure right here. And if you're crossing as an invader, you had to walk parallel to these arrow port holes. So if you came across, they would just shoot you with arrows. So it's good defense, although they never needed it. And this structure here is where they landed. This is called the octagon, and it's shaped like an octagon. So the carriages and all the dignitaries who come visit um, the uh, proprietor of the house, they cross this former bridge this way, and they meet here at the octagon. Now, if you're an invader and you made it this far, you had to come to this gatehouse, or this guardhouse. And this guardhouse actually is a higher structure that forms an arch. And inside this were the guards, and this is called a barbican. So let's say you're a good invader and you keep coming, and you make it through the guards, you do a little battle with your axe, the guards are being here. This, is, this was a, it's a giant arch, but only part of it remains. So you made it here, then you had to meet a drawbridge. So you got it this far, now there's a drawbridge, and you can't get past unless the drawbridge is down. So if you made it a little bit farther, past the drawbridge, you have these gates, and while you're standing here, they're going to pour a bunch of hot boiling oil on you and scorch you. That's how hard it is to get through the gates. If you came in farther, okay, so you come farther, you make through this section, and now if you come, get it this far, you amazingly get it this far. These holes up here, they're called murder holes. And that's, if you got it this far, they just poured hot oil and nails and buckets of goo and everything to knock you out. So those are murder holes where they just dump everything on you if you happen to make it this far into the castle. But I'll take you to, down to the end and we'll take a tour of the castle. We're on the other side of the moat where the servants would have been supplying their supplies called the South Gate. So you come over the bridge here, you enter in here, and follow me. It's called the rear gate of the postern tower. And here, this is the great hall. This is the dining hall where the Lord and his guests would sit and eat. And over here, you imagine, you had a, a giant table headed this way, and the Lord and his right-hand people and his, uh, his wife or his mistress would be here, and situated along this way, one, two, three, you'd have three long benches for his guests. And the lords and the guys in charge, they always had, always had the good food. And the guests usually had pigeons or, you know, some sort of gamey tasting quail or something. But anyway, here's where the great hall was. And if you follow me this way, I'll take you to the kitchen. So on the left here, this is the pastry, or the pantry. And the pantry is where they kept all the, the food supplies. On the right, this is called the buttery. 
And the buttery is where they kept all the wine and the ale and uh, all the booze. And in the middle here, this is the main entrance to the kitchen. And imagine that this is actually elevated with wood, right? So the, the flooring is higher than this, so you wouldn't have to step up. We'll step up today. And now we enter into the kitchen, the huge kitchen. And right here is this huge fireplace where they would cook for the Lord's parties. And is all is open, open to the top, so all the heat would work like a chimney to escape. Follow me this way. Watch your step. Yeah, this is a water well. Now, a lot of people think they actually this is water they drank from, but it's certainly not. This is a the water they just clean the dishes with and clean the castle with. The good water is somewhere else. So this is kind of a mush pot of water. But if you look up, see those holes there? Those are those are where the doves live. And what they did is they would raise doves there, and when it was dinner time, they captured the doves and then they eat them for dinner. So this is kind of like where they grew their little doves, like a farm. All right, you got that? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so these are probably just more for, uh, not for fighting, they're probably just more for, uh, for ventilation and air, these little uh, portal things. This one here is covered up. This one here, I, I can't really imagine uh, really shooting an arrow through there. You probably need a, a bigger gap. You could, probably not though. We're still in the southwest tower of the castle, right next to the kitchen. And if you remember the well here, this is actually three levels. And if you look at the ledge here, there is a floor that, let, that came across, or a roof, that served as a floor for the next level. And you look up again, there's another floor for the next level. And on the top would be where the guards would be uh, watching for invaders, because they have full view outside, because the castle itself is only two stories. So here was the great hall we visited where they had uh, their parties and their dinner. And here's the ante room. This is a main hall. This is a chamber room. And here is the chapel. And you can tell by, of course, the windows. And down here were the household apartments. Now the apartments were, of course, different levels. You can see where the line right here is. That's where the roof line was. So you had one story and two stories. And this whole thing walked all the way around this whole castle. There's a doorway and it walks all the way around at that two level. Now out here in the courtyard, where we stand here, this is always open. So the castle is really kind of hollow in the middle and this is open for the guarding, gardening and recreation and flowers or whatever else they wanted to do in the middle of the castle. And inside the chapel were the giant stained glass windows or the chapel. Shh. Bats in the belfry. There's a bat. There he is. Bats in the belfry. Here we're looking at a view from the rooftop of the castle. If it had a rooftop. And you can see how each floor has a roof lining here. So that's one floor, and this is the roof of the second floor. And here is the third story of the towers that help defend the castle. And here is the open courtyard that was used for vegetable gardens, fruit, a playground, and other entertainment that the owners of the house would want to have at the time. And there is my mom. Hi mom! This is the front of the castle where the barbican is, which is right here, this giant arched guard structure, the octagon, and the new bridge, and of course across here is the landing to the original bridge. So if you walked across the original bridge from this site, from here to here, 
you would be shot at by a bunch of arrows. So you might not have made it in the first place. So back on the rooftop here. Now I showed you the, the main hall and the main kitchen. And over here in this room would have been the retainer's hall and the smaller area, the retainer's kitchen. And the difference between the main hall and the retainer's hall is the main hall, main hall was where the king would take his guests that he wanted to impress. And the retainer's hall was guests he had to have here, but he didn't really care as much about. So if he had to, uh, you know, knight a squire or some random routine of lordship, he would probably use the retainer's hall just to get the work done, low budget, and get it over with. So that's pretty much who you found in the retainer's hall. All right, we're walking up the steps to the Northwest Tower. Only those who are strong and brave can make it to the top. And who do we find? Oh, it's Uncle Casey. Hi. And over here is the view of the North Gate once again. And down here is that wooden guy that looks like Sir Lancelot, the statue. And here's a better view from the northwest high point of the Northwest Tower, overlooking pretty much the entire castle and the other towers. And also the plateau where the Rother River flows through. And you can't see it now, but pretty much this whole plateau was one giant river that the French would sail up to accost all the villagers up in Sussex. But since 1703, it's really filled in from climate change caused by um, human warriors, of course. That's who caused climate change in those days. I'll be okay. All right, Uncle Casey. Bye. <laughs> Going down the stairs. Holy moly. Ah! Oh, excuse me. Well, we are looking at the toilet in the guardhouse, and this toilet would have flowed directly into the moat. And what would also happen is the people or the guards or the people who lived here, they'd hang their clothes by the toilet because the odor and the stench of the toilet help keep the moths away. And here's another view of the bridge that would expand across here to the north gate and the octagon and the barbican. And the barbican was the guardhouse that had its own toilet that went right to the moat. So that's my story and tour of Bodium Castle. And I hope you liked it, but if you want a real tour, with some better facts, I think you should probably have a tour with one of the volunteers who will take you around Bodium Castle. Thanks, have a great day. So I hope you enjoyed the tour of Bodium Castle. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you on the backside as I hop in my nice shiny MG.